Today we celebrate the greatest mystery ever of our Christian faith, a mystery that is unfathomable, even in eternal life, it will still be unfathomable, that God has revealed himself as Father, Son, and Holy ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, we call to mind our sins. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, <clears throat> Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the eternal Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Early in the morning, Moses went up to Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship, then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Responsorial Psalm, Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, Lord, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever, and blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory, Glory and praise forever. 
Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory Glory and praise forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Please stand. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia, Alleluia. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Corpus Christi and a warm welcome to our viewers uh, who are watching us on tape. Uh, Again, this will be the uh, pretty much the standard fare that we'll uh, tape it on uh, Saturdays, 4 p.m. for the purpose of getting the tape out uh, available for tomorrow morning when many people are waking up and want to worship at that time. So, and we, of course, we want to invite our viewers uh, to come back to the church and and then join us for worship because we are doing very well here and we want you back. We understand some of your hesitation uh, for not coming back because of your health and we perfectly understand that. So, and we are praying for you. Uh, Second thing I want to mention is that a week from tomorrow, a week from, oh actually next weekend we celebrate Corpus Christi Sunday and that is our patronal feast day of course because our parish is named after that feast. And on Sunday evening, a week from this Sunday, at eight o'clock in the evenings, because that'll be cooler, uh, we're going to have a beautiful Eucharistic procession, very much like what we did back uh, a couple, two or three months ago. We had it outside on the property, and we're going to adore the Lord. That's a custom that that started back in the 13th century, or 14th century, with Eucharistic procession. So, and everybody is invited to come to that, okay? Uh, and also communion today uh, is not going to be given in the center aisles. Uh, I, I'll be over here and the EM will be over there to give communion. You come through this way and go around that way because we have the camera in the center. Okay? In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Imagine attending a typical Sunday Mass one morning. The pastor comes out and announces that the prayers of the Mass will be altered in order to be more inclusive. He then begins with the following by making the sign of the cross. He says, the name of the Creator and of the Redeemer and the Sanctifier. At the opening prayer, he then reads, Heavenly God, we thank you for bringing us here to worship you in spirit and truth. Remove all those things which separate your children from one another. This we ask in the name of the Redeemer, Jesus. We think, hmm, that sounds kind of strange. Well, in the readings, he says all those words which refer to God the Father are changed to God or Creator. 
And then in the Eucharistic prayer, the priest would say, You are indeed holy, O God, and all you created rightly gives you praise, for through your Redeemer, Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the whole sanctifier, working of the sanctifier. Okay, so he moves anything mentioning Holy Spirit or Jesus as the Son of God. Everything relating to God the Father is eliminated, okay? And this was different. Now, you might think, this is silly. Well, <laughs> you think it's silly? You think it's silly? Every, did you think, now look in your, look at sometimes your hymnal books. You know, we have an older version, but some of the new hymnal books, you'd be surprised at how many um, Christian authors have, that have, that songs that were old songs that we used to sing by, they now deliberately have either the authors themselves, the writers, or the hymnals have changed the lyrics to make it less paternalistic to remove anything as God the Father or the pronouns he or his. They deliberately remove that because they find that uh, politically insensitive, okay? This is the, basically, you're emasculating the Trinity as though it's referring to God the Father, or Jesus his Son, or the Holy Spirit is somehow or another offensive to people. And we want to welcome and be inclusive. We've, I've seen this in the Lutheran Episcopalian Church, people tell me, that there's, some, there's a deliberate effort to emasculate the Trinity. And also I've known in some religious orders that they've done that, I've seen that. That's probably why they don't have many people in their religious order, they don't have any vocations. Because anybody, when you start tinkering with God and the Trinity, you're gonna pay the price. You're gonna pay the price. You know, there's a direct correlation between how we image God and how we image the human family. I don't know if you've ever thought about that, I once mentioned this last year, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI once stated that the Holy Trinity is a model of family life. Father, mother, and child. The human family mirrors the Trinitarian family of God. In the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, make a total offering of themselves to each other it is an offering of service and love and obedience. However, when we neuter God or remove the Trinity um, of three persons in one God or even remove the concept of self-donation, we then can define a family in a way that we want, removing all barriers of culture and mores. Recent writers have commented on the problems of our culture today. Some have described what they see as a, quote, father wound. In their writings, they see that many children have been brought up in families without fathers, or fathers who have abused their children, or fathers who took no interest in raising their children. There is a tremendous craving for the unconditional love of a father. This father wound has contributed to the rise in same-sex relationships and movements to redefine family and marriage as husband or as husband, husband and husband, or child or wife, 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 child, all these different things, I'm telling you. Other fruits of the father wound are the legalization of contraception and abortion, and the LGBT lifestyle, and the drive towards androgyny. When genders become fluid concepts, not based on biology and science, but on whatever you feel, it's fluid. Many Catholics do not like to talk about these issues, obviously, they have convinced themselves that the church is totally wrong on all these issues and they feel that contraception and abortion are necessary things. Homosexual lifestyles and relationships are good and wholesome. Yet little do many Catholics realize that these very things have destroyed marriages and ruined many families. Why? Not simply because human lives are being destroyed, but because fathers and mothers refuse to make an act of total self-donation. All of this is motivated by one thing, and that is selfishness. Selfishness is the refusal to serve one another. Self selfishness is the uh, refusal to address the needs of the spouse and the child over one's personal needs. This is totally opposite to what the Trinity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit teach us. They completely give themselves over to each other. The devil wants to convince us that this is not good for us. And that is why he promotes the idea of selfishness. He doesn't want us to look to the Trinity as a model. 
This is totally demonic what he's doing to families and neutering the, the idea of God as a loving father. This is what he wants to convince you, that God is not a loving father. You know, this whole idea, it, it, it's demonic, it's completely demonic. There is also a direct correlation, my brothers and sisters, between the effort to redesign the family structures and the loss of faith. When we begin to tinker with the family and argue that children don't need fathers or mothers or they can develop healthy lives when both parents are of the same sex and we reap what we sow and we're seeing it. Our Trinitarian God created the family as father, mother, and child. When God created the human race, he created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve or Steve or Linda and Eve. No, that's not what he did. Contrary to what people like to say, when people lose faith in marriage and family, guess what? They will also lose faith in God. Remember the words of the gospel today. God so loved the world that he gave. What? His only son. So that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have it. God gave, gave self-donation. He gives of himself. He gives his very son, Jesus Christ, the incarnate word to us. That is the concept that is being lost somehow or another in our world today in family life. Pam Tebow had five beautiful children. Her last pregnancy with Tim was a very dangerous one. The doctors where they were living in the Philippines, the doctors in the Philippines told her that to abort, or abort her child in order to save her own life. Well, guess what Pam, Pam did? Pam refused to look after her own personal needs. She took a risk and had that baby. And of course, the rest story, you know, it. Well, Tim, Tim became a very um, <clears throat> famous guy, football player, and he recently married a beautiful woman and is beginning a family. The Holy Trinity, brothers and sisters, remains for us a profound mystery. God revealed himself as three equal but distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Trinity is a family. It is a family. In fact, the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph is an icon of the Trinity. It's an icon of the Trinity because the Holy Family is a perfect model of family life. It actually mirrors the Trinitarian love. And the Judeo-Christian family has been modeled after this Trinitarian formula for centuries. But I find it quite alarming when Catholics and other Christians say that referring to God as a masculine person, as a masculine person is very offensive and needs to be changed. What makes us 21st Christians, uh, century Christians, so, uh, how you say, how you want to say, so enlightened to oppose what has been 2,000 years of divine teaching and understanding of who God is? What makes us so enlightened to suddenly change? Is it because we want to be... Remember, Jesus was never politically correct. He never catered to the whims and ideologies of the Pharisees and scribes and the Sadducees. Oh no, he did not. He stood up against that. And he, many, many times he corrected their understanding of who God was. Of course, if he catered to the political crowd, guess what? He wouldn't have been crucified. <laughs> That's the truth. If he went along with everybody and said, when you want to be politically correct, he would not be on that cross. You and I know that. I vividly recall many years ago, long time ago, I was a chaplain for the Engage Encounter Weekend. And I, I, do, I do this uh, maybe once or twice a year. And this is for couples who are getting ready to get married. And we do this retreat. And this is when, I think it was like 2002 or 2001, somewhere around there. It was about 19 years ago. And um, I, I was, you know, I was getting ready to say Mass. And it was, that time it was the old missile, the, I should say the missile we had before. It was retranslated in 2011. And I remember a young woman was a college girl, girl uh, very educated. She was the daughter of a prominent judge. And she came to me and she said, Father, I have a favor for you. You know, when you said mass early this morning, I was very offended. I said, what? I said, I was very offended. What do you mean you were very offended? What's wrong? I said, you said those prayers from the mass and I find them very, very offensive. Well, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Well, the language that you use in there is very offensive to me. I'm a feminist and I take umbrage of that. I'm only doing what I'm supposed to do, ma'am. I'm only reading what's in the book. No, 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 no. My pastor, you know what he does, Father? He changes all those words that refer to Father and God. I said, are you kidding me? Do you want, is that what you're, yes, I want you to change it. I take it. I said, no, I'm not about to do that. She got very mad, walked away, you know, and 
course, <laughs> you know, I, I don't cater to that. Then you know I don't cater to that. I, can you believe that? I mean, that kind of ideology is so suck. I said, wait a minute. These are the prayers that's already in the Missal. They're approved by Rome. You want me to change the language on that? And you think you, think you want me to stop and I said, I, wouldn't, I was not about to do it. She, you know, she, she walked out of mass in protest of that when I did I, I went exactly what, what was in the Missal. I mean, this is the stuff that, this is silly stuff. The mass should never, by the way, the mass should never be on battleground for political correctness. Let's not tinker with the Trinity. This is what God revealed to us. We begin and we end with the sign of the Holy Trinity. Anything other than that is from the devil. And we end this homily in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the profession of faith. God the ever start changing the words of the creed for that kind of ideology. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Out of love for the world, Jesus sent, <clears throat> God sent Jesus to save it and the Holy Spirit to sanctify it. We call to mind our needs, trusting in his infinite Trinitarian love for the church that we may strive to be a vis visible sign of God's love and mercy in the world today, caring for those most in need of both. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all nations may come to appreciate the value of harmonious relationships with their neighbors, leading to a world filled with peace and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all families may look to the mutual love of the Holy Trinity as a model, treat each other with kindness and mercy, and so realize the joy of forgiveness and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, teachers, catechists, and all those who help us understand and appreciate God's love for us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are beginning summer vacations, that they may find rest and refreshment and return to work or school with increased energy and enthusiasm, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For life, from birth to natural death, especially the babies in the womb, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all the, our intentions, spoken and unspoken, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice and an end to the racial discrimination, but at the same time, an end to the anarchist moving that are destroying and looting uh, cities and churches, other places. Uh, we pray for an end to this fight, this senseless violence. We pray to the Lord. Try on God, you have created us in your own image. You have redeemed us when we turned away from you and have sanctified us throughout our lives. Increase our worthiness of your love and fidelity and grant the prayers we offer today through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Once again, as we be seated for offertory, just a reminder that we don't pass the basket out. We're not allowed to do that for your safety, that the baskets for collection are in the backs of the church on those tables. And before you leave today, we ask you to deposit, or, uh, uh, deposit your collection. Thank you. Oh, we forget, we don't have a corporal. They're in the back there.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, and their equality and majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim to and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they now acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> and this evening's Mass is being offered for Pio and Malfa Pagano, requested by Rose Saladino. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all of you created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice be offered to him. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was added, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles, your martyr, glorious martyrs, with Saint Norbert, whose feast day is today, and with all the saints on whose kind intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Philippe, our bishop, and the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now we can turn to each other to make a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away his sins. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you sh in my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. <coughs> Communion chant, since you are children of God, God has sent into your hearts the spirit of his son, the spirit who cries out, Abba, Father.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Mass and let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. This song, you, all of you should know by heart. Um, the, um, let's see, oh, where is it? I forgot it now. Uh, it is uh, How Great Thou Art. Okay, 891. Okay, Tom. <clears throat> oh, Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hand have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how 